Hi everyone, this is Winslow from the Department of Management and Marketing, Faculty of Business. Welcome to this online lecture. This is about fundamentals of modern marketing. So this lecture will provide you some basic understanding about what is marketing, the importance of marketing, and also how would the marketers develop the marketing plan and strategies. So before we learn about marketing, let's start with a very interesting question. When I say the brand name Apple, the tech giant, so what come into your mind? iPhone, iPad, or is that have friends or is ecosystem? So in 2019, Apple's was ran as the most valuable brand in the world again. So Apple has beat Google, Microsoft, and Amazon in terms of the brand value. It is already the seven consecutive times that Apple's has backed the award by Interbrand. So have you ever wondered why Apple's is so successful? Indeed, Apple is not the first company to invent a personal computer, portable devices, the tablet, smartphone, or even the software to download the music. But Apple has amused a brand loyal following, like no other brands backed by significant sales, market shares, and also profitability. So think about how does Apple do it? What's the secret behind their success? So many people may see Apple as being the inventor of iPhone, but the brand has offered more to the customers. Indeed, Apple is a true marketer. So marketing plays a very important role in boosting the sales of iPhone and also the Apple's products. And also it's how the brand to develop a close relationships with the customers. And the truth is that Apple's have a very strong value proposition. So in this lectures, I will elaborate more about what is marketing with Apple as a case example. Apple is maybe the brand that is most frequent mentioned by most of the marketer. For many, it is a live case study. So here is the agenda and also the learning objectives of today's lectures. So we will take a look at the definitions of marketing and also the important elements of marketing. So next, we will dive deeper into the marketing process from understanding the marketplace and also the customer need to design customer driven marketing strategies. And also we will learn more about how we should prepare an integrated marketing plan and program so that we can build a close relationships with the profitable customer. So last but not least, we will take a look on how the marketers captures the value from the customer for returns. So then what is marketing? So every organization must perform marketing functions. So according to the American Marketing Association, that is an association that represent marketing professionals in the United States and Canada. Marketing is defined as a process of planning and executing the conceptions pricing, promotions, and distributions of ideas, goods, and services to create exchange that will satisfy the wants and needs of the customer. So by these definitions, you may note that marketing is dealing with the customers. Perhaps the simplest definitions of marketing is to manage the profitable customer relationships. So the goal of marketing is to create a value for the customers and then to capture the value in return so on one hand, marketing aims to attract the new customer by promising superior values. On the other hand, marketing aims to keep and grow the current customer by delivering satisfaction. So everyone knows that we need a very efficient and winning business plan, but sometimes we may overlook the importance of marketing plan an efficient marketing plan would define all the tools and strategies we use to attain the company revenue related goals. So this slide shows a simple five step model of marketing process, which may provide you some practical insight on how to develop an efficient marketing plan. Marketers have to understand their customer so that they can create a customer value and build customer relationships. So by then creating the value for the customer, firms in turn we capture the value from consumers in the forms of the sales, profits, and also the long-term customer equity. So let's take a look on each of the steps with greater details. 
So as a first step, marketers need to understand customer needs and wants and the marketplace within where they are operating. So we will take a look on the core customers and marketplace concept, starting from markets. So markets is defined as a set of the actuals and potential buyers of a product. These buyers share a particular need or wants that can be satisfied by buying a product or using a product. So what is the market of Apple Incorporation? Or who are the customers of Apple? So obviously, it's target to detect service and everyone, regardless of the occupations, the age, genders, geographical areas, and also races or social classes. So how about these two kids in the picture? Suppose you are the marketing managers of Apple. Will you consider the kids as your target market? So yes, why not? They are actually your high potential customers. Although the kids or the children do not have purchasing powers or financial resources to get the product from Apple, they are the user of the product. So consumer behavior study find that children actually do exert influence on their parents' buying decisions. So this is especially true in China, where it has one child policy in the past. So most of the parents' buying decision is mostly influenced by their only child. They're likely or willing to pay premium to get what the kids want in order to satisfy them or make them happy. So in such a case, children will be considered as a high potential customer of Apple. So what's motivate customer to buy the product? In general, customer will start looking for a product when they recognize there is a need and want. So marketers have to understand about the needs, the wants, or even the demands of their customer. So the most basic concept underlying marketing is that of the human needs. Human needs are the state of the file declarations which drive people to buy. So there is a classic motivational theory in the field of psychology, which is Maslow hierarchies of need theory. So this theory put forward that people are motivated by five basic categories of need, physiological needs, safety, love for belongings, esteem, and also self-actualization. So these human needs are arranged in a hierarchy based on their importance. If we look at the bottoms of the pyramid, physiological needs, this is the basic level of the primary need for things requiring to sustain our life, such as breathing, food, shelter, and also clothing and sleep. Move on to the safety lease. It is also the need for security of the body, of employment, of resources, of the families, and also of health. Love and belonging. So this is the desire to have satisfying relationships with others and feel as a sense of love, affection, belonging, and also acceptance. Then esteem needs. This is the need to feel a sense of accomplishment, confidence, and being recognition and respect from others. And the highest level would be the self actualization needs. So this is the need for self-fulfillment and desire to realize one potential's creativity, problem solving, a lack of prejudice, and also acceptance of facts. How about wants? Wants are the forms human needs take as they are shaped by the cultures and individual personality. Say for example, American need the food, but he or she may want to have Big Mac, French fries, and also soft drink. Whereas Japanese also need food, but he or she may want to have sashimi, rice, and also green tea. So you can see that the wants are shaped by one's society and are described in terms of the objects that will satisfy the needs. When back to the buying power, needs and wants become demand. Given the wants and resources, people would demand products with benefits that add up to the most value and satisfaction. So for most of the outstanding companies, they will conduct the marketing research to learn more about the customer needs and wants. So back to the Apple cases. So what drive people to buy Apple product from time to time? Apple has already aspired to produce self-actualization's need. We pay the premium Apple charge for the products because we believe that the products are at high quality and also well engineered. And also there is a greater benefit to associate with that brand. Uh, for example, iPhone, 
It is branded as exclusive and premium. It is a device that the manufacturers would have you believe result in self-actualization. So by using the iPhone, you think you think different, as the advertisement have famously stated. So how could we fulfill the needs and wants of the customer? So it can be fulfilled by market offerings. So it is a combination of product, service, information or experience offered to the market to satisfy a need and want. So what are the market offerings of Apple? So some of you would say iPhone, MacBook, Apple TV or iWatch. Indeed, market offerings are not limited to the physical products. They also include something intangible, such as the 24-7 service provided by the sales associate at the Genius Bar, or even some benefits offered for sale. So it means that when you're buying the Apple product, at the same time you are buying something intangible. It could be the shopping experience or sales services. So smart marketers look beyond the attributes of the product and service they are selling. They create a brand experience. So think about your last shopping experience in Apple Store. When you walk through the Apple Store, the trained sales associate will show you exactly how your product can be used, or they may guide you to browse their product. So the Apple Store is also the company's hub where you can go in with any questions, damaged products, or more for assistance. It is kind of the brand experience, and customers would have rewarding shopping experience in the store. So consumers usually face a wide variety of the products and service that may satisfy a given need. So again, back to the example of smartphone product category, you do have lots of the choices in the market, ranging from different brands, different sizes, different colors or design. So how would you choose among these market offerings? So in general, customer will form expectations about the values and satisfactions that various market offerings will deliver to them and then to make decisions accordingly. So customer satisfaction depends on the product perceived performance relative to the buyer's expectation. So before using or buying the product, usually customer might have some expectations on the product, such as when I'm, buy, I'm planning to buy iPhone, I may expect that iPhone can help me to take a lot of the good quality photo or it is waterproof, etc. and etc. So after using iPhone for a while, so then if the actual performance of iPhone really match my expectation, then I will be very satisfied. But what if the product's performance fall short of my expectation, so then I'm dissatisfied? So what are the implications here? Satisfied customer will buy again and tell others about their good experience with the brand, whereas the dissatisfied customers often switch to the competitors and complain about the products. So this suggests that the companies have to create a balance between the customer expectations and also marketers' ability to deliver on the value. They have to manage the customer expectation and customer satisfaction uh, carefully. So once you fully understand about the customers and the marketplace, so it is the time for the marketers to design the customer-driven marketing strategy. So in order to design a winning marketing strategy, marketing managers have to answer two important questions here. The first question will be what customer will we serve? That is your target customers. And the second question here is will be how can we serve this customer best? So that is your value proposition. So let's take a look on each of these questions with greater details. So then to answer the first question, what customer shall we serve? Honestly, companies cannot satisfy the needs of all the people. They have to choose a particular market to serve a companies may decide whom it will serve. So marketing managers have to segment the market. They have to divide the market into the segments of the consumers. It is also known as customer or market segmentations. In general, there are four major approach for market segmentations. Geographic segmentations approach, it groups the customer according where they are living. So the market can be segmented by countries such as United States, China, Japan, and Mexico or by areas within a country, such as the state, cities, or neighborhood. Then demographic segmentation approach, it groups the customer on the basis of easily measures and objective characteristics, 
such as the age, gender, their occupations, races or income level. Demographic variables are the most common means of defining these segments because customers or consumers in this segment can be easily identified. The market size can be determined by the marketers as well. But however, the buying behavior of customers with the same demographics or lifestyle can differ depending on their buying situations. So for example, some customers, they might go to the supermarket to buy grocery every day, whereas others may prefer to buy from the online grocer once a week. So first, many firms will use behavioral segmentation approach to find out and define their target market. Last but not least, psychographic approach it groups customer by how people live, how they spend their money, and also the time on the lashes activities, and what activities they pursue, and their attitudes and opinions about the world which they are living. For example, a person may have a strong need for adventure, so the need may motivate that person to buy some kinds of the products, such as the GoPro camera or Harley Davidson motorbike, that are compatible with that lifestyle. So like what I mentioned before, consumers have lots of the choices in the market that may satisfy a given need. So usually a customer will buy from the firm that's over the highest customer value. Customer value is the customer evaluations of the differences between all the benefits and all the costs of the product relative to those of competing products. So usually customer will compare how much benefit they could get with how much they should pay to get the product. So supposing you are planning to get a smartphone again, so you may consider and compare different brands, for example, iPhone from Echo, Samsung Galaxy or HTC, whatever. So if you find that iPhone has more benefits or unique features, so then you might opt for iPhone from Echo. So therefore marketers have to think about the value, what value they could offer to their target customers. The company must develop the value proposition Value propositions here means a set of the benefits or value it promises to deliver to the consumers in order to satisfy their own needs and wants. Such value propositions will help the companies or the brand to differentiate itself from others and also tell the customers about the company's positions in the marketplace. So again, back to the uh, Echo's examples. Echo positioned itself as a tech giant, a market leader in consumer electronic industry. As such, it has a set of the value propositions that makes Apple the brands recognized among the consumers, and also it helps them to stand out from its competitors. So here are three value propositions. Think different, the technologies that works, and also in 2019, Apple also start to emphasize more about the data privacy to differentiate from other tech giants, as you can see from this tech line, privacy matters in the latest promotional materials. So back to the first value proposition, think different. So there is some interesting story about Apple. Apple started to build a name for itself when Steve Jobs released one of the most famous TV advertisements, Apple's Think Different. At that time, Apple was selling the Macintosh, a simple personal computer, it positioned itself uh, as an alternative to the status quo led by IBM computer. The ad itself is actually was the response to the IBM slogan, think. So Apple was speaking to a lot of the creative people. They are the people who want to think differently. So for so many years, the brand followed through. It's gained attractions among the professional designers or also the movie makers. So every advertising agency was equipped with Apple computers or products. So obviously the tags and also the software were very good, but it wasn't just about the technologies. So Apple was selling something else. It is kind of the signal that if you are using Apple's product, you were part of the cool kids. This is why advertising agency had to buy the Apple computers in their office it was kind of the signal to tell the clients that we are creative and we have cool ideas. And also it's kind of the signal to tell the internal employees that here is a good place and cool place for working. And then the second value proposition, the technology that works. So the release of the iPod and iPhone were a tipping point for the Apple. The brand moved from appealing to some early adopters or what we call the tech service 
to addressing the mass market. So at this time, we start seeing more and more people are adopting iPod products. And in many cases, iPod and also iPhone become entry ported to sell more laptops of Apple. So Apple starts standing for something else. It wasn't about being or think different. It becomes about choosing technologies that would just work. Apple's was just a better alternative to Microsoft or Intel in terms of the laptop and also Samsung's or HTC in terms of the smartphone. Yes, so by choosing the Apple's product, you choose less customizations. But what you were saying about yourself was that you didn't care about the freedom to set up your phone and laptop. You just want something that would help you to perform some functions. And last but not least, again, the privacy. Your privacy is safe with us. This is the value propositions of Apple highlight in the recent years. So over the last couple of the years, we've become more knowledgeable about what happens to our data. People concerned about the uh, data privacy. Many consumers are worried about the amounts of the data that Facebook, Amazon and Google have about them. And Apple now aspire to be a safer alternative. They want to create a safe and reassuring ecosystem that make the user want to remain part of it. And this make Apple has more significant market share. And then the company's marketing strategies will outline which customer the company will serve and how it will create a value for the customer. The next step would be prepare an integrated marketing plans and program. Marketers have to develop an integrated marketing program that would deliver the intended value to the target customer. So marketing programs aim to build the customer relationships by transforming the marketing strategy into the actions. So it consists of the firm's marketing mix. It is a set of the marketing tools that the firms could use to implement its marketing strategies. So the major marketing mix tools can be classified into four broad groups. It's also known as the four P's, product, place, price and promotions. Firms must blend all of these marketing mix to a very comprehensive plan or integrated marketing program that would help them to communicate and deliver the intended value to the chosen customers. So the first element, product. To deliver the value proposition, the firm must create a market offerings that could meet and adjust the customer needs. So again, product here does not only um, related to the physical items, but also some intangible things such as the software, the warranty, installation, or 24-7 service provided by AI or even the sales associates. And the second element, prices. So all the marketers have to design how much it will charge for the offer. So pricing decision is important because today customers have more alternative to choose from. They are also better informed about the alternative available in the marketplace. For example, they can just simply Google everything on the Internet. So first, they are in better position to seek a good value when they buy the merchandise and the services. So again, value proposition is important to justify the cost and retail price of your product. Then third element will be the place, so also known as the distribution. So marketer also need to design how it will make the offerings available to the target customers. Marketers will work with the supply chain members or marketing channels to create a value for the customer and to build profitable customer relationships. Marketing channels here means a set of independent organizations that may help make the product and service available for the customers for their own use and consumptions. For example, there are some independent organizations such as Botwade and also some telecommunication service providers, free smart tones. They are what we call the marketing channels. So Apple sell the iPhone through different channels, including its App Store, Apple Store, official website, and also retail companies, again, Botwade or other telecommunication service providers in Hong Kong. This is about the promotions. So companies must do more than just creating the value. They must also use promotions to clearly and persuasively communicate that values. Marketers have to let the target customer aware of their offerings and then to arouse their interest in the product and create a desire to get the product. 
and also to tell them about the value of the product through different marketing campaigns and customer would be motivated by this to take actual actions or make purchase from your company. So you find that promotion is not a single tool, but rather it is a mix of several tools. So for marketers, there are many different promotional tools that they can employ for promoting their companies and products. For example, advertising, direct marketing, and nowadays we have advancements of technologies. It could be digital or internet channels. So ideally, under the concepts of the integrated marketing communications, for marketers, they should carefully coordinate these promotion materials or elements to deliver a clear, a consistent and compelling message about the organization and also its market offerings. So the next stage would be to build the customer relationships. So now let's take a look on how marketers could retain the customers or manage the relationships with the customer. So customer relationships management perhaps is the most important concept in marketing. Customer relationships management involves building and maintaining the profitable customer relationships. So who is the most profitable groups of the customer in the company? According to the 80-20 rule, 80% of the firm sales and profits is actually come from 20% of the customers. They are what we call the plentium customers or loyal customers. So loyal customers will return to your company. They will increase spending in each of the visits and recommend your brands to their friends or family or even generate positive word of mouth advertising. And firms should try their best to keep this 20% out of the customer through different approach or different means. But what about the consumers in the gold and iron segment? Marketers should try to think about some ways to converting this customer become the plentium customers. So they could encourage them to spend more, increase the share of wallets in each visit by using cross-selling tactics or providing excellent customer services. Customer in the lead segment is actually the, uh, the one who still purchase from your company but they tend to brand switching. They are lots your loyal customers and they also abuse the company's policy, such as product delivery, return and exchange. For example, if they buy something from your company later, they will abuse the use of such policy. They refund the product, exchange the product from time to time. So here you may involve some cost of the operations here. You need to assign some human resources to handle the product exchange or refund. And also the product return or exchange might not be able to resell it again in the sales floor. So um, you might need to think about how you manage these groups of the customers, or maybe this segment would deserve less attention or resources. So nowadays, marketers will use powerful computer or what we call the big data to create their own customer database that is the CRM system. So CRM system will keep track on what the customer buy, when they buy and how they buy. So customer relationships management would help all the aspects of acquiring, keeping and growing your customers. So marketers can use them to target individual customer with offer designed to meet their individual needs. And also this system will help you to segment your customer based on the frequency they make purchase or even how much they spend in your company. So the final step of marketing process involves capturing the value in return. So these returns could be in the forms of current and future sales, the market shares and the profit. So by creating the superior customer value, the firms create highly satisfied customers who stay loyal and buy more. So this in turn means great long run profit for the company. So good customer relationships management would create customer delight. In turn, delight customer remain loyal and speak favorably to the others about your companies and also your product and services. The aims of the customer relationships management is to create not just customer satisfaction, but try to enhance customer delight. So most of the companies are putting their best effort to retain or growing the customer to increase the customer lifetime value. So there are many different ways of retaining and growing your customers. So marketers could retain and grow the customer through some personalization service. For example, Apple, they provide 24 seven service to adjust your own needs whenever you want and need. They also allow the customers to add free engraving to the airports, iPad, iPod touch, or even Apple Pencil. 
customer can also ship select the Apple products and accessories with, with very beautiful red gifting box and also customized card. So marketers can also create an online brand community to retain the customer loyalty. For example, Apple has created different online brand community on different platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, YouTube to keep the closer relationship with the customers and also what we call the Apple fanboy. They are the loyal customers of Apple. Apple has provided up to date information about its campaign activities and also the products regularly to connect with their customers. And some marketers would make use of the frequent shopper program that is the membership program to keep track on how the customers spend and the amounts they spend on each of the visits so that they can provide personal services or advice to the customer based on their preference and shopping patterns. For example, Apple will offer some incentive to its current customer to buy a new models of iPhone. They can trade in the model with a very attractive prices. Last but not least, so Apple try to keep and retain its customer through the ecosystem. This is the biggest key success factors of Apple. The reason why people keep buying Apple's product. People buy iPhone not because they like the hardware, it's just because they tie to the ever growing ecosystem of the software and service that allow them to do more with the product if they continue to invest in the ecosystem. So let me explain a little bit here. For example, when Apple introduced iPhone in 2007, the current users of iPod who were already using iTunes saw something very familiar and much more user friendly than other devices such as the Blackberry, Windows, Mobiles and Palm devices over at that time. So iTunes was the seat of the ecosystem that helped Apple to sell more about its products, for example, iPhone and Mac, and its market shares and product grow rapidly. So then Apple Store also launched in 2008. After that, when people bought apps and games, they were also continue to buy into Apple while they are paying few dollars to get this new software that can run on their Apple devices. They were digging deeper into Apple's offering and further away from other brands such as Blackberry and also a new operating system that was on Horizon Android. Apple's continue to build out their ecosystem by changing the way its product interact with one another. Also, they add the ability to use iMessage or FaceTime from iPod, for example, that might allow you to carry on your iPhone conversations on a tablet. So then it's also introduced similar features to other products like Mac, also adding a support for full phone call. So the more Apple devices you use, the better they work together. So because of this reason, the ecosystem. This explains why Apple is truly great marketers and marketing helps Apple to become the world's most valuable brand. OK, so this is my sharing about uh, marketing. So hope you enjoyed my online lectures. OK. So now we come to the um, Q&A sessions. So um, if you have any questions regarding uh, marketing or Apple cases, so just please feel free to um, type the message so that we can know about your questions and I can adjust your questions here. OK. All right, so let me try. So um, here we got lots of the questions regarding the uh, COVID-19. So it is a timely issues, right? So maybe I um, speak out the questions first. OK, so in night of the COVID-19 pandemic event, what should the marketers do and to ensure how they can engage with customer or is there anything they shouldn't be doing? OK, so um, this is a really timely issue and so interesting questions that everyone would like to get the answer of it. So um, there is also no questions that marketers, especially in the retail industry, is undergoing an unprecedented transformation ignited by COVID-19 pandemic that has shuttered retail around the world in the past few months. For example, it drives unemployment to record set change numbers and also it caused an economic fallout that may be worse than in the Greater Depression. So uh, I would say it is really critical for the marketers to monitor their customers and also their customer conversations to have a clear understanding of uh, how their habits were evolving, how their interactions with the brand are shifting 
and where the brain can really uh, meet their changing needs. So monitoring social composition is really important or even analyzing the data, learning from what other marketers are doing, uh, what works or what doesn't work and having direct conversations with the customers and industry stakeholders in a mindful way with how the companies or marketers to sustain in this um, competitive or even uh, challenging time under the pandemic time. So uh, when there are number, uh, a, a lot of relatable critique from the customers, so it is really important to um, acknowledge them or even to determine how and why your business will make a change. And when responding to the challenge or even happenings within the industry, uh, I think transparency is, is paramount and it will move your business forward in the long term. So again, you may need to keep a very close relationship with your customer. Try to tell them what's, what's your uh, business operations, how you're going to tackle this challenge. So um, this crisis has also illustrated the importance of maintaining as many direct connections with the customers as possible. So that's the key. And then what's next question? Oh, uh, another question is also uh, related to the pandemic. OK, so how can marketers today prepare for the next potential crisis such as the pandemic and also its impact on the marketing environment and retail segment? Uh, I would say that um, the COVID-19 crisis has taxed the retailers abilities to pivot in response to swift and sudden changes like nothing we've seen before. So uh, many uh, marketers or the brands have mobilized quickly to meet the supply shortage, ease the burdens on frontline workers and also um, add protections for at risk customers and support some struggling small business as well. Uh, the crisis has also pushed the marketers to meet rapidly changing customers and also um, the industry needs. So they forcibly advanced the innovation and pushing the boundaries of what's achievable. So while every company has been impacted, so but consumers are still actually spending or buying something. And it is really important for the marketers to note where and how they are spending during this pandemic period and how their needs are changing and also where the data patterns lie. So then companies have to embrace and invest uh, some advanced data analytics or some information system or uh, machine learning nowadays and automations so also better prepare to react quickly to these sudden changes in the future time. So these capabilities will remain advantages for the next crisis and uh, marketers must afford themselves the kind of flexibility they offer moving forward. OK, so uh, one more questions. Oh, um, sorry, um, maybe the time is limited today. Uh, I do see there's lots of the uh, questions uh, popping up. So uh, in the later time, I will try to address all the questions uh, uh, in another video. Maybe I will record a video and post on my uh, post, uh, maybe make it available to all the audience. So I will try my best to address all the questions. No worries. But thank you so much for uh, watching and also participating in this Q&A sessions. So hi everyone, this is Winslet again from the Department of Management and Marketing. So again, thank you for watching my online lectures, which is about fundamentals of modern marketing. So now this will be the Q&A session. So I would like to take this opportunity to address all the questions that you raise out after my online lectures. So uh, here we go. Um, I got some questions regarding about the um, the uh, ad post cases. OK, first. Uh, the uh, audience have raised the questions like uh, people are a bit annoyed that Apple products are not compatible to other items like their charges. So I understand that it will help maintain the ecosystem, but won't it deter away some customers? All right, so that's an interesting question. So um, actually it is also a part of the ecosystem and also a part of the strategies that uh, Apple's would like to keep and maintain the current customers. So again, uh, the more the Apple's products you are using and investing in the iOS system or ecosystem, 
the more you are engaging with the brand and dig deeper and connect with the brand. So there will not be any chances for you to switch to other products or other brands. So that's the marketing tactics. It's really clever for Apple to um, develop very unique, for example, charges and products that's not compatible with to others brands products. OK, so um, the other question is about um, the key opinions leader, the KOL. So this term is really hot in marketing field or modern marketing. So the question here is that uh, what's your opinions of key opinions leader in relation to the modern marketing and the filters? So uh, personally, I think uh, KOL is an effective way for promoting the products and to build a brand awareness. So as you can see that many brands, no matter it is luxury brands like uh, Burberry, LV, or other brands that's targeting to the mass markets like H&M or maybe others like uh, the Zara, they try to employ key opinions leader for promoting their products or even the build up the brand awareness. So because nowadays consumers consider the feedbacks and opinions from their friends or families or even from the opinions leaders like the ordinary people, they are the trustworthy information sources. They feel like the advertisement is not trustworthy at all because the marketer could really embellish or polish the message or just present something that is favorable to their brands or to their product. So they would like to look up the opinions and feedback from the ordinary peoples like the key opinions leader. Okay. And then the next questions here will be uh, which promotion channel do you think is the most effective? All right, so um, it depends on your target customers. Again, say if you are targeting to the silver markets like the elderly, so they might not be able to catch up all the technologies or they don't know how to use iPhone or smartphone to take a look on the information from the internet. So um, maybe it is better for the marketers to use traditional uh, mediums like uh, TV, radios or print media. That's what how the marketers to reach this particular groups of the customer. I mean the silver market. But on the other hand, if you're targeting to the teenagers or the young adults, they are quite familiar with how to use the mobile technologies, or they are quite addicted to use the uh, online channels to search for the information. So digital channel would be a good choice, such as the website, uh, Instagram, IG, YouTube or again Facebook would help you to reach and engage these groups of the customer. So it really depends on which market you are targeting and serving. And uh, also it would depend on the product or service that you are selling. For example, if you really want to demonstrate the product features or if you have really innovative products like Tesla autopilot's function, so probably you might need some medium like TV commercials or the video on Facebook to show and present and illustrate how your product can be used, how these technologies and functions can be used. But if you just simply tell like the uh, appearance of the product, so then you may just simply use the advertisement on the print media or maybe just print or radio uh, advertisement as well. And uh, then um, the next question, does triple cost means back to marketing and the future? Uh, so I would say that customers are looking for what we call the value. So again, they used to compare how much they uh, they pay to get the product with how much benefit they can get from the product. And uh, also customer behavior are varied in different situations and buying situation or decisions. So for example, uh, I personally might prefer to spend $40 to have my lunch, but uh, and also sometimes I will buy some private label from the supermarket so that I can save some money. Uh, but I would, on the other hand, I will, I'm willing to pay premium to get some organic products. For example, I may prefer to get um, the organic vegetables. I am willing to pay $100 to get such a product. So again, customer behavior vary in terms of the buying situations and also the decision. So cannot how whether triple cost means better marketing in the futures. So it really depends. And uh, also there is a question about um, the locations marketing. So how can producer catch potential customer from their locations? 
uh, nowadays with the advancements of technologies and also like GPS and satellites. So this might facilitate location based marketing. Say uh, maybe you have some experience before, like when you uh, walk close to some shopping malls like Times Square. So probably you will find that they are able to detect your locations. They can sell, um, send you some real time uh, message and to uh, attract you to go uh, to shoppings at the Times Square. So actually it is relies on the technologies like GPS and uh, real time location space marketing technologies or satellites. So it will facilitate the marketers to reach more potential customers. They might be prompted to buy the message to go to the shopping malls to make some purchase as well. And then uh, last question will be uh, related to Steve Jobs from Apple. So how important a role do personalities play in marketing process? For example, a lot of people may purchase Apple product because of the image of Steve Jobs or a CEO like Tim Cook nowadays, and perhaps their faith in him. Uh, I would say yes, definitely, because Steve Jobs is uh, the founders of Apple and uh, it's also good at presentations. It can really retain parts of the uh, loyal customers. And also it is one of the brand associations of Apple, so which helped uh, people to recall the brand and also recognize the brand. So Steve Jobs itself helped the company to build a very memorable and fav favorable brand image of Apple. So I would say that some customers definitely will buy products from Apple is because of Steve Jobs or maybe his own presentations. Um, right. So uh, that's it. So I have answered all the questions. So again, if you do have any other questions regarding modern marketing or Apple cases, so just feel free to send me the email so that I will adjust your questions in person. Thank you for watching my online lectures and this Q&A session. So hope to see you around. Bye.